the White Bowser. This is a name you've probably heard of if you've spent any time watching documentaries on lol cows and infamous internet figures alike. If you don't know about this underage cartoon loving freak, allow me to tell you a wild story of internet degeneracy. I promise you are not ready to learn about all the disturbing things this guy has done. Right Bowser, now. you're a predator. You're a predator. No, hey, I'm let's not. keep this. You're let's keep this civil. No, I'm not. Now, Bowser, you're a predator. No, you, I'm not. You admittedly groped that girl. You said you did it. I am not a predator. But it seems like the deeper we go and we look at you, the worse it gets. It's like every time, just as people are about to go and forget about you, something way worse comes out. I mean, really, man. Really. 17. I had no idea. Were there miners in your server? So and I, and I said yes, there were. First found out about Bowser when people were like hitting me up saying like, "Yo, there's this like this dude telling people to like off themselves and all this bad stuff." I didn't know going in like the Discord server. All I thought that it was like Tawawa on a Monday. He was just like some uh -huh. um lolly enjoyer, you know. She looks like a 15 year old. Her friends look like children. So the fact that you sexualize her and you make comments about dreaming about turning into her is so interesting. Are you f***ing done?! The White Bowser, real name Earl Doobie, is a 30-year-old man that lives with his mother in Shelby Township, Michigan. While not a ton is known about his childhood, we do know that he went to college at Lawrence Technical University where he created a bunch of amateur videos with his friends. Line up. Smoking. It's been going on for centuries. In the late 20th century, it was proven that it caused cancer, and many people gave up the habit. Yet even today, on college campuses just like these, there are still people who continue the potentially deadly habit. There are tons of old videos just like this Earl made archived on his very own website, EarlDoobie93.com. This website's still up and running today for some reason. It was during his time in college where he would adopt the moniker, The White Bowser. I will be using his first name, Earl, and his nickname, White Bowser, interchangeably throughout this documentary. At a certain point, Bowser would create his own YouTube channel where he would post a variety of things like his own music. I don't need to conform to being gay for you. Oh. Man in five is clear. Abortion is a sin. Yeah, yeah, be a like... savage like Bowser. Be a savage like Bowser. I'll be a savage like Bowser. Maybe... And his My Little Pony AMVs. <laughs> yeah, you see, Earl is a brony. He even attended BronyCon 2017. Yes, the very same one Chris Chan would attend the same year. I think it's safe to say we need to just start investigating everyone that attended BronyCon 2017 at this point. At this convention, Bowser would enter a My Little Pony music video video competition where he would place second place out of everyone. Up until this point, nothing truly disturbing would be discovered about Earl, but that was soon about to change. Earl here was a fan of the YouTubers Smokey MCC and Kiwi Tapes, two awesome dudes that both gave me an opportunity to interview them and get first-hand information about Bowser. How did you first find out about Bowser? First found out about Bowser when people were like hitting me up saying like, yeah, there's this like this dude telling people to like off themselves and all this bad stuff. And at first, you know, like you hear that and you're like, I just, just kicked the guy out because it was in, in my old Discord server. And Bowser used to frequent a lot of YouTube, uh, different YouTubers' Discord servers. He was, he went to uh, that guy technical server at one point and tried to rally them against my community because we didn't agree with Bowser's takes on anime children. And they, they swiftly kicked him out of that community as well, I believe. Um, but the guy, the guy was like always saying this creepy shit. And then when people pressed him on it and when he got kicked out, that's when all like the uh, all the news about what he was into and like what kind of porn he watched, because I think someone asked him about that. See, in the early days, I really wasn't following this too much. So everything around there is blurry to me. So Earl could be found in Smokey's now deleted Discord any hour of the day, arguing with anyone and everyone who disagreed with his horrible opinions. One day, Bowser would be in a voice chat arguing with others like he usually was, and someone would ask Bowser the simple question, what kind of NSFW content do you consume? And without even thinking, he would answer the animes Freezing and To Wah Wah on a Monday. Freezing is an anime about genetically modified young women that have breasts four times the normal size. And To Wah Wah on a Monday is about a 15-year-old high school girl that gets groomed by a businessman in his late 20s. No matter how much people in the Discord tried to tell Bowser how disgusting viewing anime minors for pleasure was, Bowser wasn't hearing any of it. In fact, this situation would birth Earl's most infamous statement, they're just cartoons. That's because they're cartoons. But that has nothing to do with it, though. They're still underage. 
their cartoons. And this is something you'll hear a lot going forward. Earl believes that minors depicted in anime are just cartoons, so it makes it totally okay to sexualize them. I do not believe that fictional cartoons that do not exist in the real world can be granted humanitarian rights because they do not exist and because matter cannot be created from nothing, you idiots. Another excuse he would tell people was that he would watch these animes with friends in a group together, and somehow that made what they were doing okay. When in reality, you have a group of creepy incels sitting in a dorm room, bricked up, talking about underage cartoon girls, and if that's not incredibly creepy and weird, I don't know what is. This incident would cause the members of Smokey's Discord to start unearthing any information they could find about Earl. But before they could do much digging, Earl would be found back in the Discord a few days later, making an ass of himself once again. This time, Bowser had made some incredibly poor statements to a veteran in Smokey's Discord. The veteran was talking to other members about some of the struggles he was having after coming back home from his deployment. And when Bowser saw this conversation going on, he decided to tell the vet that if his life was so bad, he should end it all. This infuriated everyone, and the manpower behind digging into Bowser's history skyrocketed. At a certain point, the mods would find out about all of this, and Bowser would be flat out banned from the server. He would not go out quietly, turning to Twitter to at Smokey and tell him that his mods had unjustly banned him from his Discord server for no reason. And in an effort to further explain things, he would argue with detractors in his replies and ended up doxing his hometown. With this one piece of information, the Discord investigator were able to find out all of Earl's information. One of the most interesting things they found was a post from his Reddit account titled, The Day My Life Turned Into an Anime. In this post, he would go on to describe a situation that happened at his work where he sexually assaulted a co-worker of his. To make things even worse about this story, it was later discovered that this aforementioned co-worker was a minor. Here's an excerpt from the post so you can see how Earl viewed this situation. She turned around faster than lightning and said, you better hustle. And yes, I'm not even sure that's what she said because I don't remember. Also, when she turned around at breakneck speed, my hand moved from grabbing the back of her shoulder to the front of her chest. And yes, this all happened within the span of five seconds. When she stormed off, I was standing in shock with all my co-workers behind me, and they were all looking at me, and all I could say was, I should not have done that. The rest of the night went off very awkwardly. I started cleaning my station and I couldn't find the girl I touched anywhere. A few minutes later, my boss told me to go home, so I drove home saying in my head, what just happened? What did I just do? It was really hard working at the movie theater after that. I did not have the courage to walk up to the woman I assaulted and apologize. My boss said he was going to do an investigation if in fact other women in the movie theater felt I had wronged them in the same way. I said okay and really wasn't afraid he'd find anything. All the women there liked me. I had never received a complaint or noticed about my work ethic, and do you really think if I love my job this much, I would show emotion that I hated it? Two weeks later, I was called back into his office. He said he interviewed all the girls at the movie theater and said most of them felt uncomfortable about how I treated them and how I spoke to them. I was shocked again. With all of this information coming to light, the amount of trolls forming around Bowser grew more and more every day. At a certain point, a buddy troll would convince Bowser that Smokey was working with Music Biz Marty and Cyrax in some sort of weird, Lol cow content farm. And as insane as that claim is, Bowser would believe it without question and further go on to call Smokey a pedophile for some reason. One day, I, uh, one day people were telling me more and more about him. So I finally looked him up and the first thing I saw was him making a video calling me a pedophile because apparently me, Music Biz Marty, and Cyrax all conspired together in a content farm where we would make money off of Cyrax's rages. And for that reason alone, we were colluding with a pedophile, which therefore made us pedophiles. And that was Bowser's grand plan. What were your first thoughts when Bowser said you were colluding with Cyrax and Marty? Well, it was just like, you know, I, I just thought it was such an out there theory, oh. but at the same time, it's like, you know what? You know what, Bowser? It's like, that kind of makes some sense. You know, you're sitting there, you're sitting there seeing Cyrax rage out. You're seeing Marty laugh about it. You're seeing me laugh about it. And I, I guess in somewhere in his warped mind, that was like, holy shit, holy shit. These guys all are together in on this. And Cyrax is also rolling in cash right now. When it was like, firstly, most Cyrax things get demonetized anyway and all that. And uh, I think even Cyrax, I don't know if you ever heard him say, Cyrax believes he's worth millions upon millions of dollars in ad revenue. Okay. And you know what? Maybe he would be if he didn't always whip his burr out and scream the N-word. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, Bowser was so convinced of that shit. He was so convinced of uh, 
of us being in the, this content farming ring. And when he found out it wasn't true, I mean, it was like his world broke down. He, he couldn't believe this wasn't the, the case. Earl would make a video to further explain the allegations he was levying against Smokey. And that's where the YouTuber Kiwi Tapes comes in. How did you first find out about Bowser? I was in uh, Smokey's old Discord, and a bunch of people were telling me about this guy who was like, talking shit on veterans and uh he was he was a predator and all the all this other stuff and it kind of just un it kind of just unraveled from there to be honest like i uh i i restreamed him one time and i it all just like kind of fell into place i understood the whole thing one day bowser was streaming genshin impact and kiwi decided to restream him with the encouragement of earl's chat and false payment promises from kiwi earl would end up doing a live panel talking to kiwi describe so the, each of so these anime to me so wawa on monday is about you know what's quick hold on do can you look up it? Can you look up if they actually say how old I Chan is? I, I don't it, want that on my search history, bro. Well, well, that's the thing. They never say how old she is in the anime. They just say she has big tits. What does that have to do with? What does that have to do with anything, bro? What does that have to do with what we're talking about right now? Because that's the thing. If you're gonna, if you're gonna throw out, if if you're gonna throw out that a random drawing of someone who could be any age, has the biggest tits ever, then how can you call that as something that's part of reality? I just wanted you to describe this anime to me, and you're going on about oh, big tits. Uh, oh, I, fine, I'll concentrate. At a certain point, Kiwi would hit Earl with a curveball and bring on the troll that convinced Bowser that Smokey was in a content farming ring with Cyrax and Marty. And immediately, the troll would tell Earl that he made it all up. I don't know how White Bowser could believe any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doobie, are you still there? So you so you were a double agent the whole time? This response truly shows how Bowser viewed this situation. He saw it like it was some sort of game, or like he was the main character of an anime. And Bowser wasn't done surprising us with his stupidity just yet, because the following day, after this stream, he would message Kiwi with an insane proposition. He wanted to start a weekly podcast with Kiwi called 110 Autism. His name choice, not Kiwi's. What were your first thoughts when Bowser came to you wanting to start a podcast? Oh my god, man. I I was floored because I thought that he knew that me and Smokey were uh, on good terms. Like, he thought that I was totally willing to just sell Smokey out for uh, this guy I didn't even know. And who I, who I, who from what I did know was just this horrible, awful human being. And to be honest, uh, what I said earlier isn't true. I didn't know it all from the start. Like, it kind of un... Like I said, it unraveled over time just how shitty he was. For some reason, Bowser believed Kiwi was on his side, even though he was just saying insane things about his friend, Smokey, 24 hours prior. Needless to say, Kiwi took Bowser up on this offer and they would begin the start of the 110 Autism Podcast. On the first episode, Kiwi would bring Smokey on himself to dismantle everything Earl had been saying about him. Call yourself a Catholic. Yet you like... You, you laugh at people who have, are going through hard times, like suicide and shit. And then you, uh, you like to watch like young girls, like young anime girls. You think like God looks at that and goes, that's cool, Earl. Like, fuck yeah, bro. I'm down with that. Like, no, no, you, you I, I can't take a word you say seriously. Cause all the shit you claim, you don't back up. And after this verbal beating, Kiwi would tell Bowser that people paid to come on the panel and talk to him. He would follow that statement by telling Bowser, since they're not scammers, that he has to sit and listen to everything the people had to say. And surprisingly, he did. This is where we meet Cow Wrangler for the first time. Cow Wrangler would join the live panel and start ripping into Bowser, giving us one of, if not the most, visceral freakouts from Earl ever. All right, I have another guy here in the back, Cow Wrangler. Does that sound familiar to anybody here? Mr. Uh, Chandler, as you can tell, yeah. this man in particular preys on women because he's a no good degenerate the yes. fact that he likes to praise that he's a catholic he's a good righteous man is bullshit exactly yeah he is nothing more than someone who uses the name just to feel big and good about himself he likes to go into those subreddits and preach and pray and try to look holy bowser Do god doesn't the, uh... like you you will be remembered not as a good man but as someone who scares women who scares people who goes around and spreads his degeneracy without anyone wanting it. And I'm just gonna emphasize it again. 
Chihuahua does say that I is 15. It emphasizes that she's in high school. And you still jerked off to it. I mean, I, so, I looked at I looked at the wiki. And I mean, it, it does say that. Is that true, Bowser? Is Chihuahua 15? Oh, I sent. I actually sent you the link to the wiki, Kiwi. So I figured that would help you out a little bit. Oh, okay, okay. I sent I it to everyone that. in here, I believe. <laughs> because I wanted to make sure that everyone was well aware of who they were talking to. And that girl, besides from her obnoxious breast, looks like a child. She looks like a 15-year-old. Her friends look like children. So the fact that you sexualize her and you make comments about dreaming about turning into her is so interesting. Are you done? Please fucking stop. I mean, she's just oh, like, the she's bad just bad. Well, yeah. No, no, no. I think... But, oh, fellas. I don't mean to exacerbate the wound attack. here. Fucking attack away! Fucking stop! Well, well uh, yeah, no, guys, 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 guys. Fucking hell! Bowser, okay. Bowser, come on. Go ahead, fucking Kiwi. hell! Fucking stop! Bowser, come on, dude. We got. Remember, like I said, dude, this is a podcast. We're just chilling. Hearing Kiwi jokingly trying to soothe Bowser is so funny to me. Just take some breaths. You want to take a commercial break? Do you want to take a commercial break? We'll be right back there? after these messages. We'll be good. Come on, we can dude. we can take a minute. We can take, take a minute. Take a quick commercial break. There's nothing the matter. Everything's fine. It's just a cow wrangler. Remember what we said about the goon? The goon's a goon. The cow wrangler's a cow wrangler. Bowser would cool off and be brought back onto the stream a few minutes later to be verbally abused by cow wrangler again. Can I just say one thing? I wanted to add in here really quick. If this was such an accident, Bowser, why do you have a history of preying on women? I don't! Oh, you do, Bowser. In fact, you do. It's actually really well documented. There's a cosplayer. There's the reddits that you've been ran out of. Um, and let's not forget the girl that you groped. So, you clearly have a history where you're going- I fucking don't, women. you fucking psychopath! Besides the freakouts from Bowser on this episode, it would also be learned that he would call his friend Liquid Ricky the N-word after he tried to give Earl some advice. When I lost my job at the movie theater, I also- no, I lost a lot of friends, and I did rather enjoy that job in the movie theater. So when Ricky said t to me, um, you only got paid $12 an hour, that that job like shouldn't matter. That job doesn't matter. When Ricky said that job shouldn't matter, when Ricky said that job doesn't matter, I took that as a personal insult against myself and my friends that I liked working with a lot of the movie theater because I had a lot of friends at that movie theater. And, and uh, it was just... I got so mad at him being so apathetic against me losing my job. And when he seemed apathetic to me losing my job, I lost my shit. And I just said, you're an arrogant N-word because you're apathetic to me losing my job. And that was it. And the first episode of Too High for Stupid would come to an end with Smokey making Bowser freak out once again. All I have to say to Bowser as I leave is, Bowser, you can get as mad about this as you want. You're a predator. I am, I, I am not a predator. Bowser, Bowser, Shut up, predator. I am not a predator. Fuck you, I'm 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 not a predator. You are a fucking psychopath. You are a fucking animal. You are a fucking drug addict. Fuck you, I'm not a predator. Take that. Goodbye. You're a predator, You're a predator, You're an asshole. You're a psychopath. Animal. Let him talk. Let it, this is not. Bowser, this is not like, good for the lawsuit. You are a drug addict. You are a drug addict loser. Listen to you. Listen to you. Inhale your fucking weed. You can't even add two plus two. You fucking idiot. Surprisingly, he would show up the following week for episode two. Why he would do this after the way the first episode went is beyond me. But he did. Kiwi and Smokey planned a mock court trial for the second episode and put Bowser on the stand to be questioned. They had no intention of ever interacting with Earl after this episode, so they pulled no punches and asked Earl any uncomfortable question they could think of. They start by pressing Bowser on what happened at the movie theater and even had him reenact what happened. And we would also learn about another insane movie theater incident that was unrelated to him groping his coworker. Apparently, a few weeks prior to this podcast episode, someone would leave a comment on one of Bowser's YouTube videos advising him that he shouldn't go back to the movie theaters that he used to work at. And Bowser for some reason took this as a bomb threat and rushed down to the theaters in a panic ordering everyone that they need to get out and that they're in danger. The police would show up and evacuate everyone clearing the theater of any threats. I know this sounds 
fucking insane, but here is a police report from that day. Dispatched to Imogen Theater for Threats CFS. Dispatched advised a white male, Earl David Duby, went into Imogen Theater and told staff he believed the theater was under threat of attack due to a YouTube comment on his channel. Mike advised there was no threat to the theater at that time. Mike also advised Earl was a past employee who had been terminated over a year ago due to inappropriate behavior with a female employee in which Earl allegedly groped her. Mike explained Earl approached him and other staff of Imogen and said the theater could possibly get shot up or bombed and he had a YouTube comment which he referenced. Mike informed me that the YouTube comment did not even mention Imogen Theater and was a reference to an early 2000 animated TV show, Homestar Runner. The police even interviewed Earl at the scene, and after explaining why he did what he did, for some reason he decided it was a good idea to start telling the officer about the incident that happened between him and his female co-worker that got him fired. Earl then directly jumped into the situation between him and the employee from over a year ago which caused him to be terminated, saying he accidentally touched her chest and it was for 10 seconds. That long pause was 10 seconds. That's how long it would have felt having this creep's hand on your chest. After finding out all of this information, Kiwi would end the second episode of the podcast by telling Bowser what he honestly thought about him. I just want I just want you to know, I, I do not like you. You are a pedophile. You are everything that oh, these people call me. you. And the me. fact that they started a, that you came to me and wanted to start a podcast with me, knowing the kind of shit that I cover is fucking hilarious and if you think that you're ever gonna talk to me again or you're gonna get anything out of me well you're gonna be waiting for quite a few tawawas on a monday we'll put it like that i'm never talking to you again this podcast is never getting another episode um what about payment yeah, and what about payment? Nothing Kiwi was saying was even remotely getting through that thick skull of Earl's. The whole time Kiwi was talking, Bowser was just concerned about getting paid. After this episode ended, a truly horrifying discovery was made about Earl. It turns out Earl here was the owner of an anime Discord server. This server was full of minors, some as young as 14, and the admins in this server were disgusting. They all went by Daddy, Earl included. His screen name was Daddy Butcher, and Earl would do some deplorable things with the young members in his discord. For example, if the members would do their homework, Earl would reward them by streaming explicit animes and cartoon porn to them. Another thing Earl did was knowingly use a minor as bait to lure out more potential pedophiles in his server. If you're wondering why I mentioned your age in my discord server, it is because I wanted to see if I could bait out and catch bad actors. Remember, I am a smart man, 110 IQ for a reason. DM me if anyone in the server grooms you or otherwise. These things are serious crimes, and they would be reported to the proper authorities, however, nothing would be done about it. After finding all this information out, Kiwi and Smokey devised another plan to get Earl back on a live panel to confess more things. And the plan was simple. They were going to tell Earl that they were trolled into thinking he was a pedophile in an attempt for him to forgive them. While he didn't show up for episode 3 of their podcast, episode 4 he finally agreed to come back. Earl was under the guise that Kiwi and Smokey were going to apologize to him and tell everyone that they were wrong about the things that they were saying. No, 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 no. I'm a very forgiving person. I'll be forgiving. I just want to know who trolled the great Kiwi. Because we verified that MF Goon trolled uh, Smokey, but who trolled Kiwi? Bowser, bro. I am like so. I'm genuinely so sorry for calling you a predator, bro. Okay. I like to hear that. I am too. Yeah. I'm sorry for accusing you of having uh, underage kids in your Discord. Okay. Like I was totally wrong on that one, right? There's no one there's no one under eighteen in there. I know that for a fact, right? Right, yeah. Right, okay. Um Okay. Uh what else is there here? And after about an hour, Earl was convinced, only for Smokey to hit him with the truth once again. Bowser, you know, earlier I apologized to you for being a predator, and that was really, that was my mistake for calling you that. I should have never called you a predator. What I should have called you was a predatory groper, uh, a pedophile. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things I could have called you that I didn't call you, and uh, 
Oh, he's, he's gone. <laughs> wow. Well. Following this, Earl would send this message to Kiwi and block him right after. Hello, Kiwi. As of today, I am blocking you on Discord and the 110 Autism Podcast is ending. I was visited today by a private investigator who had to take a report about how you and the trolls are trying your best to criminalize me. The investigator assured me I did nothing wrong and that you and the trolls have no life and have no idea how the law works. This has officially gone too far. You harass me, that's one thing. You harass the state and the law, that's another thing. Thing. Now the police took a statement from me on the whole situation. If you trolls continue to harass the police, they will open a case against you and Smokey and you will be prosecuted. Especially Smokey, he has no idea what he is treading into. Lying about accusations that will ruin someone's life and then bothering and harassing the police about it. I'd like to see what YouTube would say about that to Smokey and your YouTube channels. I am not a pedophile. I am not a child predator. And now that the police are involved because of the trolls, this will be the end of our communication forever. The trolls officially ruined it, Kiwi, and the law is involved now. I was told I did nothing wrong. Case opened and case closed. The case will be reopened if the police keep getting harassed, then you and Smokey can kiss your YouTube careers goodbye. And from there, he would start making apology videos that would have the complete opposite effect of what he was trying to achieve. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid of you trolls. I'm not afraid of what sh of what you could possibly do to me since I haven't done anything criminal. Yes, I've made mistakes. Yes, I will atone for them. Yes, I have apologized for my mistakes. Yes, you trolls don't seem to care how many times I do apologize for my mistakes. You don't. And I can put on like you know a, a facade, like you know the like you know the video I put out two days ago where I where I put on a character, <laughs> and you guys manipulate and twist that into a new reality. <laughs> you know I, I I can be afraid that you'll call my job. I can be afraid that that you'll send packages to my house. I can even be afraid that you'll uh that you'll send packages to my job which which by the way you guys sending packages to my job really could land you in hot water that could really land you in some big trouble if my job traces those packages back to you need I remind you the authorities and the police are already on your are already highly aware of what's going on and I haven't done anything anything criminal. You guys, on the other hand, are on on track to uh, gain misdemeanors on your record. While that was happening, the people looking into Bowser behind the scenes were uncovering new information every day. This is when Kiwi and Smokey decided to start their own podcast called Too High for Stupid on the exact same time and day as the 110 Autism Podcast. This was their attempt to try and lure Earl back onto a live panel and grill him once again about all the new information that has been discovered. And shockingly enough, this worked. Another buddy troll had convinced Bowser that his apology videos were actually working and that Kiwi and Smokey wanted to have him on the podcast to watch one and apologize to him again. And for whatever reason, Earl believed this to be true and showed up for the first episode of Too High for Stupid. Kiwi and Smokey did not apologize to Earl, and in fact, it was actually quite the opposite. For an hour and a half, they would argue with Bowser about everything he's done. Yeah, Bowser, I just want you to know, like, you saying that you're falsely reporting my channel is against TOS as well. You're using your audience against me. I'm not That's using against anything against you, Bowser. I'm telling the complete God's honest truth about you, and you're just mad about it, so you want to get my channel taken down. You know that's fucking against all the rules and shit you want to... You wanna you're to you're Smokey, you're violating TOS right Bowser, now. you're a predator. Why did you make this video on Smokey, White Bowsers? Do you, do you believe that he's using his audience against you? I do, yes. Hmm. How? Because you have no control over your audience, and you You're take right. zero accountability. They do what they want to do. You take zero accountability for their actions. Hmm. Bowser, I'm not responsible for the people who watch my videos' actions. They yes, you my... are. You 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 cannot enforce a, 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 and you cannot enforce cyberbullying, Smokey. You cannot I, Bowser, enforce. I've told it. everybody. I've told everybody that I don't want nobody to mess with you. Is that good enough? Because. What do you want me to do if someone looks at that video and says, man, this Bowser guy is a fucking creep. And they just decide, hey, I'm going to write this white Bowser and say something mean to him. That's not my, that, that, you can't blame me for that.
It's okay. It's, I'm not full of shit, Bowser. Yes, you are. You are full of shit. Bowser, we can... Oh, God, you are full of shit. I am not, I am not a pedophile. I am not you a predator. You're a predator. I, I, you are. I do not have to deal with your crap, you sick, depraved, pedophile. degenerate. I, I, I'm leaving the suit. I'm leaving. And just like always, this resulted in Earl storming off in a fit of rage. From here on, Bowser would do his best to avoid directly interacting with Kiwi and Smokey. However, he was talking to other people trying to explain his case. One of these people would be the Black Bowser, or Froggy Donut. He would reach out to Earl, claiming he was an internet reporter wanting to talk about Earl's situation. Without any questions, Earl agreed to speak with him, and this is where we discover even more disgusting information. My question was from the beginning, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, were there minors in your server? So, and, is... I, and I said yes, there were. All right, all right. Uh, um, there are allegations. Um, I'm seeing a lot of that you uh streamed hentai in this server. What's that about? Did you do this? Only once. Earl would go on to reveal that he and his mod team would show pornographic materials as a reward to these young kids if they did things like their homework. And there was even occasions where the mods of his server were caught grooming children and nothing was done about it. The public outrage and demands for justice were at an all-time high at this point, causing Earl to stop talking with absolutely everyone. This would not stop him from making pointless video diaries about how he's not a pedophile and streaming Genshin Impact, however. This would not stop the trolls online from trying to get in contact with Earl. With his home address being discovered at this point, they would send a variety of things to his house trying to invoke a reaction out of Earl. At a certain point, he would even be caught outside taping makeshift signs up to his house. This house has been targeted by cyberbullies and internet criminals. Please leave me alone. I have a disabled mother I'm trying to take care of. I am leaving the internet. Earl Doobie. One of the funniest things that was sent to Earl was a clown for his birthday. The clown was instructed to live stream the entire thing, leaving us with this interaction caught on film. Bowser's mom would answer the door and quickly shut it in the clown's face. This interaction would cause Earl to unblock both Kiwi and Smokey and send them this long-winded message before ultimately blocking them once again. Hey look, I've come to deliver a message. The same one to Smokey and Kiwi. Your people are coming to my house now. People or strangers with face paint and worse coming to my house and harassing my mother. This is no longer funny anymore. It is no longer a prank. Real people are in danger here. I don't think you want blood on your hands. You are internet trolls clearly, but you don't want people dead, do you? My mother was lucky enough that they only had a cell phone on them this time. Next time, they could have a gun or knife on them. Next time, my mother might have her life put in danger when they are at my front door. This is a warning, so listen closely. I have told the police to make frequent checks at my house crossroads. If people show up at my door again just to scare me, then they will be arrested and they will be prosecuted. And if you are found to be in league with them, then you will be punished severely. This all started with your false accusations about pedophilia, Smokey. Now I have made mistakes. I groped a woman by accident. I showed hentai to teenagers. Yeah, I know it's messed up. You can call me a degenerate all you want for that. But once my mother's life is put in danger, you cross the line. I have never groomed kids and I have never preyed upon minors and I am not a pedophile. And now that my mother is being harassed by your gang, I am done playing around. So if you don't want people to get hurt, or worse, realize this. This is no longer funny and it is no longer some sort of sick prank. My life and my mother's life was put in danger yesterday. If you have any sort of conscience, you will end this charade and stop this madness. I know you're an asshole and my psychiatrist and I agree you're a dipshit, but you do not want people's blood on your hands. I have my doubts, but if you are full blown psychopaths, then I still don't think you would want this. And I do not want my mother's life or house put in danger. Now please, for your own sakes, come forward, tell the truth and stop putting my life and my mother's life in danger. Earl would in fact be visited by the police and would go on to dox the officer that paid him a visit, which is totally unsurprising at this point. Bowser was beginning to crack from all the pressure being put on him from people online and was willing to do just about anything to get it to stop. He would make his infamous apology video where he doxed the coworker he had groped at the movie theater. Bless me, oh internet, for I have sinned. This is the white Bowser here, and I'm showing up for a confession on the internet. I dressed up in full church garb, and uh, we're going to get straight into it. Now, what I'm going to discuss in this video will be full transparency about what I did wrong at Imagine Macomb, and I'll do a part two to this video where I describe what I did wrong on the anime Discord server. Now... Before we even get started with any of this, 
I want to preface this with the with the simple with the simple exit. I did not mean for any of this to happen. I did not prey on anyone intentionally, and nothing was done that I wanted to happen. Now, did I make mistakes? Yes, of course I made mistakes. Will I man up for them and confess to you what my mistakes were? Yes, right now I will confess to you what my mistakes were. I dress up in confession uniform because uh, I am doing a YouTuber apology, I guess you could say. But what I've realized is that this apology video won't matter. There's still gonna there's still gonna be uh, assholes online who don't care about the apology. There's gonna be ass. I, I I've I've said this time and time again how I've received forgiveness for my actions, but still doesn't matter to assholes on the internet. They don't care. You, you, you don't care that I receive forgiveness for what I did. You don't. So, don't know really why I'm doing this video. But, still gotta fess up for what I did. Still gotta confess my sins. So, I will now confess my sins. On June 24th, 2021, Nick called everyone over. Everyone in the theater, he called everyone over in the theater to the corner of the theater to uh, have a meeting. It was an obligatory meeting, which means you had to show up. I had to show up, Kayla had to show up, Matt had to show up, everyone had to show up to this meeting. Everyone did. Most of you know this part of the story, okay? One thing that was customary to do... During, during the obligatory um, human resources meeting was everyone would put their hand in the middle and say, Go imagine, right? Well, Kayla, Kayla didn't want to do that. Kayla didn't want to do the Power Rangers ask, Go imagine bit. She didn't want to do it. I wasn't thinking at the time. I was, I was foolish. I was stupid. I was. And I have to learn to forgive myself for what I did, but let me just explain what I did. Kayla walked this way. I swung my left arm over, grabbed her left shoulder. She turned around way too fast for me to react. My hand slipped. It touched her chest. That's what you call... And, much to my dismay, much to my... Much to how I hate to admit it, I groped someone. Yes. I groped a woman. And that is my own sin that I have to bear that I had to ask for forgiveness for. Now, bear in mind, I was really quite in shock when the whole thing went down. I had never touched a boob before. I was just sort of frozen in place. My hand slipped and it touched her chest. That's all I can say. It truly was an anime-esque moment. Kind of fitting since I'm su kind of fitting since I since I'm such an anime nerd, but I digress. You know, the craziest part is that, that is that she was kind of a flat chest. Uh, she was like no bigger than a B cup. <laughs> it was actually her twin sister Heather who uh, got the good genes. <laughs> That's right. He just reduced sexual assault to an anime touch a booba moment. And yes, he did call her flat chested right after. What the. F Fuck, man. After this, he was willing to go back on Kiwi and Smokey's podcast to try and clear his name once again. And so, after 11 weeks, Earl would finally show back up on Too High for Stupid. Look, the chat is excited as hell to see you back, bro. It's like a two, it's a 110 autism reunion. Yeah. Isn't yeah, 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 I guess, but it's, things are still uh, shaky at best with the whole, like, um, like, with the whole, like, people coming to my house thing, you know what I mean? I've been yeah. meaning to ask, um, like, 
What what has your life been like recently? Just describe it to everybody. It's it's been stressful. I I've definitely been stressed with uh I've been stressed with the harassment. I have. I I I haven't liked the harassment. No, I haven't. Um, I, that, that, all... that, 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 that server was also horribly moderated. I didn't even support. <laughs> no I, kidding. I didn't even support half the stuff that the teenagers or kids posted in that server. Then was, why did you own it? I, like it just doesn't make sense. Because it was because it was given to me. First of all, I I always said. Uh, uh, I always said that I, I i i i don't prey on minors i really don't now do i do i joke do i joke with and like 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 what what, what can i say like um like one one thing i said uh during when i was inside the 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 disco server was do your homework kitties and yes a big part of the server was all the kids were in school. Of course they were. They were kids. But so I so I would I would jokingly say, jokingly say, do all your homework, kiddies. And 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 and, and that was that was the running theme because I was the only one that was in school. All he really did here was shift the blame from himself to the teenagers that he allowed into the Discord, which is so f annoying and deplorable. He can't even take responsibility for his own actions. Eventually Bowser would leave again and episode 12 of Too High for Stupid would come to a close. Thank you for coming and speaking with us today, Earl. You're welcome. Really, really all right. appreciate it. All right, all right. So, Kiros, uh, we're going back to chess now, okay? Yeah, sure. You gotta play that first guy, but yeah, I'll play another round with you. All right, see ya. That peace. Yeah. Oh, that that fucking pedophile. Like, oh my god. A few days after this, someone investigating Earl would get in contact with the co-worker he had groped at the movie theater. Because Bowser had doxxed this woman a week prior, it made it very easy for the internet to track her down and make contact with her. Nice going, Earl. While talking to Bowser's victim, she disclosed that at the time of the movie theater incident, she was still a minor. And the discovery of this information would have Earl so scared that he would practically beg Smokey and Kiwi to come back on the podcast to try and apologize and explain himself again. I was lied to on multiple occasions. If you guys all remember, the twin sister of the sister who I, uh, the accidental groping that I did on one of the girls, her twin sister lied to me on multiple occasions about her age. And I can't say for certain if she did this because she was infatuated with me or not, you guys might remember the. You guys might remember the the um, confession video I made. I said that one of the one of my coworkers, the twin sister of the sister who I assaulted, I thought she had a crush on me, but before the accident. And um, she, she, she certainly acted like it. There, there was gossip in the workplace around the time. There was a lot of gossip in the workplace around the time. And that's why I assumed it. But she lied to me on multiple occasions about her age. And it were those lies. It, 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 were, it were those lies that led me to believe that uh, her and her sister were at or above the age of 18. And... It turns out, no, that was that that's that was wrong, and I am now more ashamed than ever to hear the truth come out, a truth I never knew. So, no, it turns out that I'll I'll say it. Um, no, it turns out I groped a minor. At a certain point, they would be joined by Cow Wrangler, who had some choice words for Earl. I don't even know where to start with you, Earl. I'm not going to lie. Well, like, no, say your piece, dude. Say your piece. My piece is that uh, at first I thought that you're just kind of a piece of shit, but maybe it would it'd be one of those things where it's only surface level. But it seems like the deeper we go and we look at you, the worse it gets. It's like every time, just as people are about to go and forget about you, something way worse comes out. I mean, really, man, really. 17. I had no idea. You keep dropping doxes on random people who are involved with the situation I'm, who I'm, are just trying I'm, to live their regular lives. I'm done dropping doxes. Okay, but you did it beforehand and you're only upset now because you're getting in trouble for it. People are saying, 
hey, that's kind of fucked up. Maybe you shouldn't bring up these random people when you're being looked at as, like, a pedophile. You really are being very aggressive right now. I don't appreciate that. I don't like pedophiles. That is why. I'm not a pedophile. I've done You are a up. pedophile. No, I am not. We've established that you are. You even said that you have pedophilic tendencies. Yeah, so, but I'm hey, not. Bowser, can I ask you a question? I'm not attracted to kids. Bowser, that other Discord server you had, were any of the other quote unquote daddies caught talking to the miners or anything? Yeah, and I had to stop them. But they were. And I had to stop them, yeah. So other so you said, right, that you're not the only quote unquote daddy in the server with the miners, but there were other people in there who had the same label as you were caught talking to the miners in a sexual way. And I had to stop them, yes. But like like Cow Wrangler just brought up, you said you were rarely in there. Well, there were some times when I had to put a stop to some uh, some of the kids, some of the adults flirting with some of the kids, yes. Because you made an environment where that felt appropriate. That's why I deleted the server. No, you deleted it because you were caught. Yep, that's right. The daddies in Earl's server were caught talking inappropriately to minors because Bowser created an environment where this was possible. He would claim that this is the reason why he deleted the server altogether. But you and I both know it's because he was in such deep shit it was the only thing he could do to try and get any little bit of scrutiny off of him. A very defeated Bowser would leave the show and return posting apology videos on his channel to try and appease the trolls. Here is one of those awesome apologies, let's take a listen. You think you'll find validation like you think you you think you you think you're some sort of vigilante you you are surrounding yourself with the most negative and the most abhorrent of acts and then you find joy in it all i can feel from this experience about talking about pedophiles, all I can feel is disgust. All I can feel is an absolute sick taste in my mouth. Meanwhile, I look at Joe Schmo over here, and he's like having the time of his life insulting pedophiles and predators. Me, I, I can't even bear to look the same way. I want to run away. I want to run away from it. Just, just talk, you see, do you, do you hear me right now? Just talking about all this, just talking about all this stupid shit puts me in sick pain. It makes me so sick. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. It makes me sick talking about this sick shit. I'm sure you won't be surprised when I say that these kind of apologies were not enough to get the internet off his back. While Bowser hasn't interacted with Kiwi or Smokey since the last episode of Too High for Stupid, he did start making contact with another troll that we have talked about on this channel before, Music Biz Marty. Unfortunately, Marty dropped the ball in his interactions with Bowser. While he did manage to get Bowser and Cyrax on a panel together one night, the white Bowser, how are you, how are you doing, Cyrax? This is the first time I've ever seen you in, on the camera, you know? Hey, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. Honestly, it, first off, white Bowser, I do want to say this. Yes. Yeah, okay. I am. I honestly, like, not trying to be offensive here, dude at all whatsoever i'm not but you know like i said I've, I've seen the stuff that's going on and you know getting to actually meet you and stuff that's mm -hmm. real that's fucking cool but i do want to say this man i do hope that you know that i have no hard feelings towards what you did i get why you did what you did well, what did i do to you whenever like Marty, what was it that you said they did? Like some sort of diss track or some shit a while back or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did a really awesome diss yeah. track. And well, I'll, I'll do like, the like, I, 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 I haven't heard you spit back, like... During this time, he would also make this weird video asking Cyrax to dance. Hello. If you are seeing this, that means you are now a member of the Associates. As many of you know, we fight an endless war to make Chance Wilkins dance, but he has refused over the past seven years. And as many of you know, we dedicate ourselves to archiving all videos the Goblin deletes from the internet. 
But now, it is time we dance back. If you are seeing this, you too can perform the lightning legs and be a member of the Associates. If you are seeing this, you are trustworthy of being in this secret group. Our goal is to make Chance dance live on stream, lest he be put in jail for going after children. People such as Cyrax, Lord CP, Rick Productions, any pedophiles who refuse to dance before the associates live on YouTube will be held in court for their crimes against children. Marty really didn't do much trolling when he interacted with White Bowser. In fact, he kind of helped out Earl by promoting his Cash App tag to his viewers, and I don't really know why he would do this. There was really only one time he got Earl to spurg out. I mean, you can't help what you like, I guess. I, 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 I oh my gosh. Well, well, what? well, well, well that, well, 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 like, whatever, whatever. Whatever. Am I, am I going to have to die on the hill of liking fictional cartoons? If they're of kids, then, like, you know, I would say that, like, that, 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 that does say something or all, and, like, it sucks, but. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, true, did, true. like, all, all right. So then, then that means, then that means that everyone, that means that everyone that watches anime that is of kids will also have to die on the hill, and 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 that's not just me. That's like pretty much every single user who browses anime forums Early. on Reddit. Okay, fine. Bro, you wrote like a rap song about how excited a, six, a sixteen-year-old cartoon's boobs made you. They like big boobs, and I cannot lie. They're in a sixteen-year-old cartoon. Oh my. Oh yeah. I won't deny. Well, well, why, why are we going? Yeah, yeah. You want to know what I said right there? Uh, like her, 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 her age is a work of fiction, my guy. Her age is a work of fiction, my guy. Her <laughs> age she... is a work of fiction, my guy. <laughs> But she's portrayed as a sixteen-year-old, and like it, it turns you on. Like this rap song indicates that this. I oh my gosh! I, I keep on having. I I have to. I, I, the definition of insanity is having to say the same thing a million times, and no one understands you. I do not like sixteen-year-olds. I like big boobs. I like big boobs. I like big boobs. The sixteen-year-old has nothing to do with it. I just like big boobs. <laughs> oh my gosh! Am I gonna have to go to jail for liking big boobs? Big boobs. Big boobs. 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 Oh my fucking god! And eventually, the relationship between Marty and Bowser would fizzle out, and Bowser would go on to delete every video on his channel. For a while, the only new updates we would get from Earl were from his community tab. Here, he would post insane rambling like the ones I'm about to read to you. Is it right for me to be bullied off the internet? Yes, actually it is. I realize that I've been slacking. I realize that I have been slothful and distracted. I am an artist. I love anime. I love video art. I love video editing. I do not love the internet. I've got less than 60 days to create my next AMV and I'll be damned if I miss the deadline. I am logging off and reminding myself my love is not for the internet. It is art. All right, never mind. I just had a screaming and crying fit of a mental breakdown in my bed that lasted over an hour, hyperventilating, shivering, and feeling paralyzed. An attack of absolute shock, horror, and fear that people are still coming to my house, letting out shrill screams like a tortured animal. The psychotic break is over now. I calm down. Thanks for screenshotting this. Oh my god, that felt so f***ing good. I spent almost an hour stroking my dick while watching Tawawa on a Monday. I am never apologizing for that shit ever again. F*** all of you. Oh wow, that was a damn hard on. Okay, well, I think that's enough. <laughs> I think that's enough reading these posts. At a certain point, Earl would delete the channel altogether and hasn't been seen since. A little while after deleting everything, Bowser would make one last damning appearance on the internet. He would be exposed talking to a buddy troll in a Discord server about his new job working with mentally disabled kids. And this part of the story ends with a happy note because Bowser would not get this job. He would post this on his Patreon when he found out the news. And to clarify, no, I did not pay for this guy's Patreon. I found this on an archive on the Kiwi 
farms. It was revealed to me that I did not get my new job due to an undisclosed person operating as a middleman and buddy troll. I am still unemployed, and I am thankfully making money from my unemployment checks. This will be the last win the LolCow community gets on me. I have scheduled the last of my social media accounts for deletion. Two weeks from now, all my Discord data will be destroyed. I do have a burner account on YouTube and Reddit, but I cannot use them for interaction, only for lurking and spying. Other than that, there's Patreon and Coffee, which is social media, but it is only used to make money rather than for social interaction. And I know I cannot post any activity on my LinkedIn account because these people are spying on that social media page. The only way I can update my career status is through a personal resume attached file sent to employers. Playing video games online is also a no-go. I have to do it all offline in solo mode. I cannot friend anyone on the internet. This is a dawn of a new era for me in life. I officially have zero social media presence anywhere on the internet because I cannot trust the internet. 50% of the way I communicate and make friends in the world is gone. I cannot talk online lest being discovered. Real world interaction is all I have now, and in 2023, with the power of the internet, that is pretty sad. Earl's out there somewhere lurking on his burner accounts, and if you're seeing this Earl, you're a predator. This is where the story of the White Bowser comes to an end. There has not been much new information that has come out about him ever since he was fully ran off the internet. And at the end of all of this, I had a couple more questions for Kiwi and Smokey that I thought add some cool introspection to this story. If you could go back and change anything about how the situation played out, would you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say, um, so there's a lot of misconceptions about this story. Uh, a lot of people believe that we took it into our own hands before ever forwarding stuff to the police. And it's like, before I even got involved, before like we ever started talking about him, it was already forwarded to the police. Yeah. And they got back to people and just said like, nah, it's just this internet shit. And after that, it's like, well, do you let the guy keep doing the shit and all that, right? And it's like, no, you don't, you don't. And after a while, I'd say after a few months, more people got involved in it. Bowser ended up like, Bowser ended up finding a, a home. Bowser ended up being like welcomed by certain people. Yeah. And it should have that like that was just bullshit. That was bullshit. If you could go back and change anything about how the situation played out, would you? Absolutely. Um, I would have like full dove in headfirst with my research. Um like understood just how awful he was because I there were people in the background who from my understanding had already reported like everything like the laugh tail leaks everything uh, before all of this went public like months later it was all given to the police and they did not give a shit yeah they um, usually don't with internet shit no no they don't and it, you know but part of me understands that but at the same time like the township has especially been um I don't know, Earl paints it out like they're positive towards him. I don't know if that's completely the truth, but what I would have done is I would have, I would have done all my research first. I would have liked to know just how shitty of a person he was and uh, act a little differently because of that probably. Oh, and you know I had to ask them this question. Would you try the chicken at Bowser's Mental Hospital? I, if it's fried chicken, yes. Like I've heard rumors before that's fried chicken, but I assume that it's like that boiled grilled chicken. Yeah. And if it's that, then fuck no. I mean, one day we all will. One day we'll all be in like a nursing home and shit having to eat that, but I ain't trying to have it right now. Would you try the chicken at Bowser's Mental Hospital? Oh man. I tell you, what I wouldn't give to give one piece of Henry Ford chicken, my man. Oh. What if it was boiled? It boiled even the better. It's oh, got to be no. boiled. Boiled and flavorless because, you know, your stomach is upset from all the pills they're making you take. You got to can't have anything that it's going to like make your stomach worse. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this story. Remember, White Bowser is a predator. Thank you for watching my video.